Welcome to this video tutorial. We're going to be using TechSoft Design, our 2D CAD software, to create a name plaque which has got this very distinctive 80s style um, arcade kind of pixelated font. And you'll see why we're going to be using that shortly when we actually get going. Um, but you can see that these letters have been individually cut out on the laser cutter and then stuck onto some colored paper. And some people even start to color them in as well using marker pens, which looks absolutely fantastic. Okay, so let's just minimize this, see where we are. And uh, we're going to be working with, as I say, TechSoft Design. So to access the software, I'm going to go to the Start menu and I'm going to type in Tech, which is then going to give me a link to TechSoft Design version 3. That's what we want. Let's click on that and see where we are. So this is our software that we're going to be using. Um, and uh, the first thing I want to do with this is look at the grid settings because with using TechSoft um, or 2D CAD software, um, one of the key advantages we get from this is the ability to make very precise engineered parts. And to be able to do that, we need to work with precise dimensions. So what we have here is a grid made up from a series of dots. What I want to do, well, I, I find this quite difficult to use. So what I always do is convert the dots into pale blue lines, which I find are much easier to follow and work with. So to do that, I'm going to right click here on grid lock or step lock, doesn't matter. I get the grid coordinates settings dialog box and in this dialog box I'm going to go with a five millimeter grid spacing rather than a 10 millimeter and the reason for that is it gives me that little bit more resolution to work with I'm going to change this from dots to be lines and I'm going to change the color here to the pale blue I always go with this top pale blue color I just find it the easiest on the eyes and the best to work with click on okay there click on okay again and what I get now is this nice pale blue grid now at this particular point you can see I'm working with millimeters as I'm moving around and I know that because well first of all if I go again right click on the grid settings here I can see all my units are in millimeters and I can also see that down here at the bottom I've got my absolute grid reference and my relative grid reference as I move my mouse around here is in millimeters now I'm quickly going to show you how to convert this into centimeters I personally am not going to work in centimeters um, because most product design that we do uh, here is is for kind of um, human scale objects and millimeters I tend to find gives me the, the best resolution for that. But if I wanted to work in centimeters, I go to setup drawing, I'd go to units and I would then change this to be centimeters and then confirm. However, I am not going to do that. I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to leave mine in millimeters. If you change yours into centimeters, it might help, help you, you know, work with numbers more easily, but, um, Bear in mind that most of my demonstrations will be in millimeters. Anyway, let's move on here. Uh, now, to be able to create this kind of, you know, 80s arcade style font, I've actually got um, a graphic that I'm going to work with. Um, and uh, you'll find that with the material that I'm working with for this particular course, we've got this guide to how to make a geometry set. And in here, there is going to be this graphic, which we're going to be copying and pasting onto our drawing area. So if I right click on this and I go to copy image, I'm going to minimize that window now. So I'm back into TechSoft Design. What I want to do here is paste this in. Now I'm going to give you a little, little bit of guidance here. First of all, I'm going to make sure I've got grid lock turned on. I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to do Control V and paste this image in. And if I zoom in with the wheel mouse, you'll see that instantly this is off the grid. And I really want to make sure that I'm snapping the gray grid on this graphic to the pale blue grid in the background. And by having the by pasting with the grid off, I'm making it very difficult for myself. So I'm going to either delete this, select it and press delete on the keyboard. I'm going to undo that, that paste feature. I'm going to turn grid lock on now. And now what I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to go to paste here. Now, instantly what happens is, well, it pastes in a bizarre location, but if I now click on the center square once, move in and click again, then it's now onto my drawing area. But again, you'll see here that the bottom left hand corner, it's actually off the grid. And that's because I've gone with the right click and paste. And I tend to find that doesn't align to the grid very easily. So again, select and delete. Okay, what else could I do here? I could go edit and paste, or I could do control and V. And now that I do this, if I now just click move up, you'll now notice that it is actually snapping right into that bottom edge there. So that's exactly what we want. Absolutely perfect. 
Okay, now the next thing to point out here is that I've indicated how many squares make up this grid. I've not mentioned centimeters or millimeters. I've just said that this x-axis from the origin bottom left to the far right of this image consists of 46 squares. These are the gray uh, squares you indicate, as you see here on the graphic. And then here on the y-axis going up slightly less, 40 squares. So why am I saying this? Well, what I want to do to make my life easy is I want this pale gray grid to match to the pale blue grid. And that's going to allow me to then then come to this uh, this Bezier curve tool here. I'm going to hold my mouse button down, move along until I get to the open polyline tool, and then it's going to allow me to basically draw with grid lock turned on. I can draw around these shapes. So you can see that in the bottom left-hand corner here for this V. I'm just going to finish this quickly. Um, the grid is close enough for that to be absolutely the case. Right-click there to finish. However, if I start to look more to the right here, uh, you'll notice that on the x-axis, the grid goes slightly off. And if I scroll up here, you'll notice again that the grid goes slightly off. So if I try to do this G here, you'll notice that it's not really quite aligning. Here we go. Let's just, let's actually fill that in again here. Shouldn't take me too long. You can always just whisk forward 10 seconds in the video there to get ahead. Okay, there click and then right click to finish so you could run with this but it is slightly off so what i want to do is just make it so that this graphic actually is going to be aligning perfectly perfectly to the grid so i'm going to come to the dimension line tool which is this tool right here a really important feature of any cad software is being able to dimension things with precision and i've got grid lock turned on and what i'm going to do is zoom in and i'm going to click in this bottom left corner where the graphic is aligned to the grid and as soon as I do that, in fact, I'm going to right click for a second. You'll notice if I come down to the, the, the bottom here, there's an abs and, an and a rel. This again is super important. The abs represents the absolute grid reference in relation to the origin of the drawing area. And you'll notice that the origin of the drawing area is this area down here. That, that is the, the location. Um, Okay, sorry, excuse me. Um, now, when my, when my mouse is in that position, you'll notice that this is zero, zero on the absolute grid reference. But you'll notice that the relative grid reference is kind of gobbledygook, minus 290 by minus 215. Okay, so what's happening there? Well, as I move to the right, you'll notice that the absolute grid reference increases. And I've got it on the absolute grid reference from the origin, 60 millimeters in the X, zero in the Y. If I now move up, you'll notice that that now has gone to 60 in the X and 30 millimeters vertically up from the origin and if i come to the to the actual corner of the graphic i've placed in here this is now 80 millimeters x along from the origin and 30 millimeters up vertically from the origin if i now click on that point the absolute grid reference stays the same but the relative grid reference now resets to zero zero so that relative grid reference is now referencing from the last point clicked i'm now going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to zoom in over here and I'm going to extend my mouse along so that I've got a line which is 230 millimeters in length. Now, why 230 millimeters? Well, I know that I have 46 squares making up this graphic. And I know that each square is five millimeters or half a centimeter. Okay, let's go with half a centimeter. So if 46 half centimeters OK, that, that's what we have here. Um, how how many centimeters is that? Let me rephrase that. How many centimeters is 46 half centimeters? OK, well, hopefully here you realize that if I take 46 and multiply it by half a centimeter, then it's going to give me 23, which is half of 46. So that wants to be 23 centimeters. Now, if you've modified your units to, 20, to, to, to centimeter units, then, of course, that will say in the relative grid reference, 23 centimeters. But I'm still working in millimeters. So now I need to move from centimeters into millimeters. Well, hopefully you know that there are 10 millimeters per centimeter. So let's come back to our calculator. If it's 23 centimeters and there are 10 millimeters per centimeter, then I need to multiply 23 by 10. And you should know that anything multiplied by 10, well, all you do is you add on a zero. So 23 centimeters is 230 millimeters. So I'm looking for a relative grid reference here of 230 millimeters in the X axis. And of course, zero in the Y because it's a horizontal line. I'm, I'm now going to click 
a second time. And now I'm going to move the cursor down just three squares and click a third time. And that's now defined a dimension line that's saying that that distance wants to be 230 millimeters. Now what I can do is get the selection tool, click on this graphic. I'm going to zoom in on this edge over here and I'm going to move this I, no, let's have a see. At the moment, it's going to snap to the grid. In fact, there we are. Look, I can just move it in. There we go. Move that in and snap it onto that grid point. There you go. So that's now exactly 230 and millimeters, should I say. And the point now is that hopefully all these lines are now lining up. Now, to see if that's the case, let's zoom out and then zoom up here. Now I can see that the G is far more closely aligned, the outline that I drew, to the G in the graphic. Let's just undo that for a second. That's where it was. Let's just redo it, and that's where it is now, much more closely aligned. However, you'll notice that vertically, it's still slightly out of alignment, and I can see here that there's a problem. This graphic is going off the grid again. Okay, so what can I do about that? Well, I know there's 46 squares along. Well, half of that was 23 centimeters. Multiply by 10 for millimeters gives us 230 millimeters. Let's look at the Y. We've got 40 squares. Well, that's even easier because I know that 40 squares multiplied by half a centimeter, oops, a daisy, multiplied by 0 0.5, which represents half a centimeter, is going to give me a total of 20 centimeters, which as millimeters times 10 is, of course, 200. So dimension line tool again. I'm going to click on the origin. And now looking at the relative good references, you'll notice they're currently now 0, 0, because I've clicked again on that corner, which is 80 millimeters uh, on the X and 30 on the Y from the origin. And I'm going to bring this up vertically to 100. So the X relative reference, uh, uh, sorry, coordinate is now 0, and the Y relative good coordinate is plus 200. I'm now going to click a second time, move in three squares, click a third time. And now I've got this new dimension line defining the height of this shape. Now, let's zoom in here with the wheel mouse. Remember that this, this is slightly oversized, and as a result, my G isn't quite lining up with the graphic. But if I select this and now pull this down so that it's snapping onto the grid with grid lock turned on, that's now exactly 200. And notice now how the G is almost perfectly aligned. It's slightly off here because there's a slight distortion there with the dimension lines in the middle for some reason. Um, but but it's pretty much close to perfect. And now I have aligned my 80s arcade pixel font grid uh, or graphic to the grid of the software. I can see everything's lined up. In fact, I can even just right click on the grid here and I can select on here grid in foreground and that again is literally going to oh it should line up perfectly with all these letters to turn that off right click again on the grid turn off grid in foreground notice nope that looks good sometimes it kind of messes up a little bit in which case you need to go to the redraw or the windscreen wiper up here click on that and it's going to pull everything back and now just to confirm everything's working fine the l looks like a nice simple character to do let's just with grid lock turned on here of course again always so important working with grid lock turned on here i can now very quickly draw around that shape and i'm snapping to the grid and it's tracing it out beautifully. All I need to do now is once I've got the characters of my name mapped out, and I'm trying to think of a name that would have a G and an L and a V, but I'm struggling, then what I would do with the selection tool is I would take each of these letters, I could move it into position, or if I wanted to, I could control C to copy, control V to paste, and then again with gridlock turned on, I can take these again, copy paste, again, copy paste, and I can line them up to make my name plaque. I could even bring that one slightly to the left there because it's, you know, this, even though there's a, a five mil gap there, I think it's kind of bringing the letter closer to the, the name. The name is kind of arranged better on the screen. Okay, so there we go. I hope that was helpful and made sense. Um, good luck with the process, and I look forward to seeing what you're able to create as your name plaques.